What is going on guys, this is Daniel, and today I will be breaking down why the Atlanta Hawks offense is special. Mike Budenholzer has installed a terrific motion offense, and in this video I really want to focus on what separates their offense from the rest of the pack. How they run their set plays, their use of concepts, and their overall flow, and I'll show you how this offense works. So let's get to it. So, the Hawks dribble the ball up, and a simple ball reversal triggers the play motion strong. They reverse it twice, and then the two passers will set a double staggered screen for the wing in the corner, and here it gets Kyle Korver a good look at three. This play usually isn't called from the sideline, but here Budenholzer does signal for motion strong by putting up his fist, so the Hawks will run the play, two ball reversals, a double staggered screen for Korver, and Korver gets fouled shooting at three. Now, off the double staggered screens, if the wing doesn't have a good look, that triggers horns. Korver goes to the corner, Horford comes to the elbow, and they're in the horns alignment. Cephalosia will pass it to one of the elbows, and here he has a countless number of options. On this play, he'll decide to cut around Horford looking for the handoff, and then when he doesn't receive it, down screen for Korver in the corner, who will come up to receive the dribble pitch, and this results in a wide open three for Cephalosia. So here, Dennis Schroeder will reverse the ball, Millsap will pass it as well, so this triggers motion strong, and usually they'll both set a double staggered screen for a wing in the corner, but notice how there is no wing in that corner here, so Schroeder will simply use a single screen. Now, because there was only a single screen, the Hawks really aren't in position to go into horns, so this triggers a whole new option, a double screen like you see here. And with all the weak side movement, you can see how this can open up a two-man game between Schroeder and Millsap. Here though, they do hit Cephalosia coming off the double screen, and he nails the three. Again, two ball reversals, this is still motion strong, but because there is only a single screen, that triggers the double screen, Korver comes off of it, this creates lanes for his teammates, and it results in a Horford layup. Watch how Teague will dribble it up, and it looks like he's about to reverse it to get into motion strong, so his defender John Wall relaxes, so Teague explodes to the basket for an easy two. So, motion strong is one way they like to get into their offense, another way is the dribble at. Teague will dribble at the trailing big man instead of passing to him, and that triggers the big man on the block to come up and screen for Teague, and they get into a screen and roll, and Teague can score. Again they run this dribble at option, and Teague can use the high screen and roll to again drive and score. This time Schroeder initiates the option, and there comes the high screen and roll, and Schroeder here can dish to a cutting Millsap. Let's talk about the Hawks high post series, cause it's varied and very difficult to defend. Here Schroeder hits the high post, and he'll decide to cut around Horford with the pinch post cut, and then he won't receive the handoff though he might have been open, and he'll cut through. That triggers the player in the strong side corner then to come for the dribble handoff, and Millsap receives this handoff and gets an and one. Again, this is out of the flow of the offense, not a set play, so Carroll hits the elbow, and like Schroeder, he'll cut around in pinch post, but this offense gives you freedom, and instead of cutting to the basket, Carroll will decide to screen for Korver in the corner, and coming off that screen, Korver can come and receive the handoff, or curl to the basket, which he does here, so Carroll can receive the dribble handoff and get an open three. Teague will pass it to the elbow here, and he'll decide to cut to the weak side, and this allows Millsap and Horford then to execute a two-man game at the elbows, and here Horford will screen for Millsap, and they get an alley-oop. Pass to the elbow, and here Schroeder will decide to perform a bit of a split in front of the high post. He'll screen away for Cephalosia, that could open up a three, and it could open up a backdoor cut as well. Here, they don't really execute it very well, but it still provides movement around Millsap at the high post, allowing him to attack and hit a little jumper. The Hawks run a few plays out of their zipper cut series, so let's get to that. A zipper cut is a straight cut to the top, and here, after receiving the pass, Korver will hit the high post, and it looks like this play is a flare screen for Korver, but here he fakes going that way, and comes back to receive the pitch from Horford, and nails a three. 
Here's the loop play. Zipper cut and Teague will receive three screens along the baseline. But notice here how Wall is denying Teague's path toward the baseline, so Teague simply cuts toward the ball and gets an in-close shot. He just can't finish. Definite, 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 definite. And maybe the best play of them all, zipper cut, and they'll have shooter drive baseline, and on the weak side, they'll set a back screen for a shooter to get an open three. Nice skip pass by Schroeder, and it's a wide open corner three for Mike Scott. Here's a play out of their Iverson series, which starts with a high cut across two screens. This is called an Iverson cut because Allen Iverson used it a lot to great success in Philadelphia. Here though, Scott, who cuts across the top, is the decoy, as this is just to set up a high screen and roll, and Shelvin Mack can drive and score. One of the most unguardable NBA plays is the double on ball screen with a shooter popping and the big man rolling, and here they find Horford for an easy layup. Again, they run the double ball screen here, and they don't get anything immediately, so Schroeder gets a rescreen, and notice how well they move the ball, resulting in a Cephalosha 3. Let's talk a bit about some of the plays they run for Korver, and we showed you earlier this play, where Korver received a pin down in the corner and decided to curl it to the basket, and Carroll got the open 3. Now here's the same play, except Korver does go for the dribble handoff, and he hits at 3. A simple but effective way to get Korver an open shot is by the quick pin down. Before the defense is set, a Hawks big man will set a pin down for Korver, and here he gets an open three. So before the defense really knows what's going on, boom, a quick pin down for Korver, and the best shooter in the game gets an open look. Here, the quick pin down allows Korver to drive and dish to Horford for a layup. Watch how Horford is about to set the quick pin down for Korver, but Korver will then screen for Horford's man, and a great mid-range shooter gets an open look. That's teamwork. And here, it's a double quick pin down for Korver, which is even more difficult to defend. Here's a play where basically Korver can run along the baseline with pin downs on both sides, and here he comes off of one, then flows right into a screen and roll, nice pass there, and Horford gets fouled. Same play, and like we showed you earlier, Korver will decide to flare screen for a teammate, and the defense never had a chance. Here's a set where Korver will screen for the on-ball screener, then sprint to the corner, and here the Hawks execute the pick and pop. Same play, and watch how Korver's screen gets Millsap's man way out of position, so Teague simply passes it to Millsap, who can attack a poor closeout. Here's a variation where Mack will screen for the on-ball screener, then receive screen the screener action, and this occupies the weak side defenders just enough to allow Schroeder to drive and score. The Hawks will execute a screen and roll here, and Teague knows the Blazers want to force him to this area, so watch how he'll weave toward the middle to create a better passing angle to Horford. And here the Wizards will hedge the screen and roll, so Horford knows to roll to the basket, Millsap will flash to the high post, Carroll will pass it to Millsap, and boom, they have a 2-on-1 situation as Gortat, who hedged the screen and roll, is still recovering, but here Millsap can't hit it. Let's talk about the Hawks' execution of post-ups, and here Schroeder will enter the post, and then go for the give-and-go cutting hard off of Millsap, and then dish for a dunk. Here the ball goes into the post and Korver will receive a double stagger screen on the weak side. This confuses the defense and directly leads to a corner 3. The give and go option once they hit the post is very tough to defend as Schroeder can cut to either side of Horford and here he has a layup but passes it down and still hits the mid range jumper. Atlanta is unselfish, always willing to make the easy play, and Scott gets it in the post here and simply makes the pass out to Millsap for the rhythm 3. And if the post is fronted, the Hawks know to simply reverse the ball and go high-low. Watch Damari Carroll on this play. He's not going to stand still as a statue on the weak side. He's active and aware and cuts back door for the layup. Here it's Scott who reads the defense and makes a simple basket cut, and it's a layup. On any drive toward the baseline, the Hawks are well taught and know to fill that weak side corner as this can become a very deadly kickout pass, and here Scott nails a 3. As Carroll receives the pass cutting toward the baseline, watch how Korver will sprint to that corner and get an open 3. 
and even on possessions when the Hawks can't manufacture a wide open three or an enclosed shot, they can always get an Al Horford mid range jump shot. And Horford is one of the best mid range shooters in the game, so this really isn't that bad of a shot. Many teams want to give up mid range jump shots, so to have a guy like Horford who can beat this tactic to a certain degree is extremely valuable, so they just run a screen and roll as the shot clock is dwindling and it's a wide open 15 footer. Well, there you have it, guys. And what I went over in this video is really just the tip of the iceberg. I didn't get to many of the set plays they run or some of the options they have on the set plays I showed you. But I hope this gave you a bit of an understanding of what the Hawks do on offense and why they are so successful. So thanks for watching and see you next time.